guys it's Maya welcome back to my channel so in today's video I am going to be showing you guys how I take my digital math notes I am so sorry that I have been inactive for about a month life has been just a little bit difficult but now I'm back with a highly requested video so that is exactly what I'm going to show you today the application that I've been using for a while is OneNote. You guys know that I really do like OneNote. I barely started this last semester that I just finished, thank the Lord. And OneNote is such an amazing application, especially for students, and it's free. So you guys should definitely go check it out. So now for the supplies that I use, of course, I use my HP Spectre X360 2-in-1 laptop. You guys know I am absolutely in love with this laptop. One of the best purchases ever in my life. Of course, the main reason that it's called 2-in-1 laptop because it can be a tablet and a laptop at the same time, which is amazing. And thank you so much for 12k on my other previous note-taking video. It means a lot to me, guys, especially that I've been inactive for about a month. So thank you so much for that. Lastly, my writing tool, I did use the HP pen that came with the laptop purchase, which is amazing. And the precision point of this HP stylus is just awesome. Another good thing about OneNote is that you can look your notes in different multiple screens, which is pretty awesome. And I absolutely do love that about OneNote. And of course, thanks to the HP Spectre X360 2-in-1 laptop, you can decide if you would like to write in two different ways, and I just mostly like to put my laptop all the way flat. Okay, so this is how my notes look like. Of course, this is the simplest routine that I use. It may look a little bit complicated, but like I said, I'm going to walk you through really fast because it is an easy process. So make sure you guys look through all of this video portion because I want you to look at my notes and see if you do like them or not because if you don't, of course, I would not waste your time. Again, guys, please keep in mind I'm not saying that my note-taking strategy is the best one or it's the one that's always going to work. Remember, everybody's different and this is the way I taught myself with Calculus 1. So the only reasons that I'm doing this video is because one, it was highly requested and two, because I would just like to show you, you know, especially if you're an engineering major if, or even if you're just taking math classes, I got you. Okay, so what I use under OneNote is on the top, so I do use an eraser, a black pencil, a black pen, a blue pen, a purple pen, also a green pen, and now with the highlighters, I use a yellow highlighter, a green highlighter, a blue highlighter, a purple highlighter, and a red highlighter. So now I do like to take my ruled line paper and change it to grid paper and I just like to start typing only the titles because it makes it just look a little bit more cleaner and neater. I just get the ruler and highlight with a red highlighter just like that with the titles to make it look a little bit more nicer and I did get this idea from an amazing YouTuber and her name is Revesign. Since I am getting my notes from a textbook, I do like to write the page number and highlight it with red. Then I write down my subsection titles and then after I write them down, I do like to take the purple highlighter and highlight only my section titles in purple. Since I am a visual learner, my instructor does like to put picture graphs on his PowerPoint, so I just decide to copy and paste them. Then I like to take the purple highlighter and only highlight the titles of those picture graphs. And then with the yellow highlighter, I just like to highlight any important information that is on the picture graphs. Sometimes I do also like to write just important information under picture graphs to just make sure whenever I just need them again to just look back and see the information that I wrote for myself to see when I actually will be using these formulas or just look back at a picture graph. I use the black pencil for this. So now I'm going to show you guys how I do my example problems. These mostly come from notes or sometimes from videos, but this is from my textbook notes. I do write the letter EX and then I like to use the green pen and just put a square around it to make it look pretty and to also tell me that it is an example problem. Then I just write the title of the problem. So now I'm going to show you guys the whole process on how I write an example problem when it comes to just seeing it from the textbook and just writing it down for future references when it comes to solving problems on homework. While I'm writing my problems down and going step by step, I do like to use my blue pen and just write down little notes for myself as such for me saying, okay, how did I get from here to here? How did I get from this equation to this equation? How did I get the answer? So I do like to write notes down for myself. 
And again, since I am a visual learner, I do like to put also pictures in my problems. And sometimes I do just like to highlight, like, how did I get the answer again? It helps me a lot, guys, especially if you just want to write notes down for yourself or even put pictures. Trust me, it's going to help you so much. Guys, and let me tell you, Cal 1 is so hard, especially if you're trying to teach for yourself due to this freaking pandemic that is going on. I did have a little bit of a hard time. It was not easy for me, but trust me when I say all the hard work in the end is worth it, especially for engineering majors. You know what I'm talking about. And finally, after it taking at least about three years for solving just one freaking Cal problem, I do highlight my answer in a yellow highlighter. Now, to keep my problems a little bit more organized, I do like to go into the shape function and make a straight line all the way down to separate each problem so I do not get confused with anything. Now, sometimes I do get my math problems out of my textbook, but sometimes I also do get my problems out of this amazing, amazing math tutor that I found on YouTube. And his name is the Organic Chemistry Tutor. Guys, trust me when I say this man, oh my god, he is so amazing when it comes to explaining math problems. He even has statistics, I can't even say that, statistics. He even has biology, biochemistry, XL tutorials, number systems, electronic circuits. Like, oh my god, he has so much more, but he is amazing when explaining problems. This is an example problem from one of his amazing videos and trust me when I say guys, it looks like it's the same method the way I'm solving it but I did actually understand on how the heck it's been solved thanks to him. But like even my professor sometimes would be like, wow, how did you solve it this way? This is another way to solve it. Nice job. And I'm like, well, you know, it's because I watch the chemistry tutor so. And after highlighting my answers, I sometimes do like to also put blue arrows on equations and stuff like that. And again, I always like to separate my problems. Now, when you guys saw on how I took my math notes on actual paper, you guys saw that I do like to use symbols. And the star symbols signify that I get my problems from YouTube videos and my square symbols signify me that I get my problems from textbooks. It just helps me tell the difference on which one is which. Okay, so sometimes there are those problems where they're too freaking long to write down or I can't even copy and paste them. So what I just like to do is write the example number, the example title, and where the example page is located. And then afterwards, I like to highlight my example in green highlighter and then highlight the page number in red, just like in the beginning of the video. I'm pretty sure some people are going to be like, Maya, you're just lazy. You're right. Sometimes I do get lazy after six hours of homework or six hours of writing down problems. But then I just like to do squiggly lines around that with the blue highlighter to make it pop out. So since this section did not have any problems where I would have to graph, I'm going to just show you guys real quick on how I would normally graph. I basically use the shape function in OneNote, which is absolutely amazing. It makes your lines really straight, but as you can tell, one of them is not that straight because Maya didn't put it straight. I don't know why. I guess she forgot. But then you can just make it really pretty. They have so many different lines, different sections, which is really, really nice. Lastly, when I try to make shapes for anything, I do use this ink to shape function and it just makes my shapes really nice and perfect. So yeah, guys, that is it. That is basically how I would make my notes. And I know the bottom looks a little bit ugly, but it was just an example to show you guys. But literally, this is all that is it. I know it's really fast, but trust me, I use this method all the time. And guys, thank you so much for all your support. Honestly, I know I've been gone for a month. Like I said before, it's just been a little bit rough. But thank you so much for sticking around with me. And thank you so much for 180 subscribers. It means so, so much to me. Also, if you guys do like the background music, it was actually made by Music Studio FX. So thank you and shout out to Music Studio FX for making my background music. And again, guys, I love you guys so much. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys later. Bye, guys.